What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Hello and welcome to the Car Passion channel. I'm your host Greg Peters. Today we're going to be accessorizing the VVT block with a little oil filter sandwich plate. What do you say we jump right into it? An oil filter sandwich plate is a simple little piece that goes in between your oil filter and your block. And this one in particular adds three high pressure oil ports, which can be used for various things such as sensors or a turbo feed. Now before a hundred of you ask, why didn't you just run your turbo oil feed off the sandwich plate instead of doing the track speed adapter? Well, that was because I failed to read very closely and didn't realize that the sandwich plate comes with three ports and not just two. So I might change my setup later, but for now the main reason I got this was to run a couple various sensors. In the first port, I'll be running an oil temperature sensor. So here's a little lesson about oil temperature. Snapple fact of the day, your oil actually comes up to operating temperature much slower than your water. Most people think that once your water temperature gauge is in the middle, you're good to beat on your car, but that's not true for a couple reasons. Number one, when your water temperature gauge is in the middle, the water temperature, at least on the Miata, is really only about 150 degrees or so when operating temperature is 195. And the second thing is, when the water comes up to operating temperature, the oil can still take several minutes after that to get up to its operating temperature. And that's essential to flow through the bearings properly and lubricate all the parts inside the engine the way it's designed to. So I'll be running an oil temperature sensor which I will wire through Megasquirt and that's how I'll get the gauge. It's a much better gauge for judging when you can beat on your car and when you should take it easy. In fact, that's why a lot of new BMWs don't even have a water temperature gauge. They they only have an oil temperature gauge. And this build to me is more than just getting max power out of an engine, it's keeping it safe and reliable and getting good longevity out of it because frankly, I can't afford to do this twice. Now the second port will be receiving an aftermarket oil pressure sensor. Now unlike the oil temperature, the Miata does have an accurate oil pressure gauge. Well, at least as long as you have a 1.6 cluster. So why on earth would I be running a second oil pressure sensor if the one that I have in my 1.6 chassis works perfectly fine? The problem is that it's difficult to get the stock oil pressure sensor to communicate with Megasquirt. So I'm adding an aftermarket sensor that will communicate with Megasquirt so I can set up safeguards. And what that means is I'll be able to tell the ECU, hey buddy, if RPM is above this and oil pressure is below this, I want you to hit a stout rev limiter to let me know immediately because a momentary loss in oil pressure can mean this, this goes bye-bye. We don't want that. But Greg, why don't you just run the aftermarket sensor and delete the stock one? Because I want my OEM oil pressure gauge to work. I've got rev limiter gauges, they look way too awesome to have a dead one. And I'm OCD, so no. All right, enough chitter chatter, let's get this thing installed. The installation is actually really simple. You just take off your stock oil filter and then you put the sandwich plate on, make sure the rubber seal is facing the block. Obviously make sure the surfaces are nice and clean. And then you put on the uh, post extender. After that's installed, you just drop on your oil filter like normal. Yes, this is a uh, used filter I'm using just for demonstration. And you can run it just like this if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and add my sensors now. So now you know the ins and outs, no pun intended, of an oil filter sandwich. Okay, I intended the pun there. 
it, it was a dad joke. You don't have to laugh. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe even throw me a subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Back from the dead. All right, I know my OGs are staying until the end of the videos, and I wanted to give you guys this opportunity. I kind of want to do a Q&A video, and a lot of the ones I've seen are kind of boring, but I think I can do a cool one. So if you have a question that you want to ask, it doesn't matter what it's about. It doesn't have to be about cars. It could be anything. Be creative. I'm going to pick the best questions, and I'll do a video answering all of those questions. So if I've already done the video, I'll go ahead and link it right now in one of those card things in one of the corners of the screen. Um, um, if it's not there, I haven't done it yet. So pick an awesome question for me, and I might answer it in the Q&A video. Thanks, guys. Peace out.